Sup guys, Hicking here, bringing you my top 10 list of movies that I thought were great in 2021. Or in this case, my top 10 list of best films that I personally enjoyed in 2021. Okay, so these are my opinions. It doesn't really mean uh, like, oh yeah, these are the best films ever made. No, it's just a case of what films I generally enjoyed and thought were good. Now, there's a lot of movies I didn't get to see this, well, last year, we're, we're, in, we're in 2022 now, so yeah, last year, <laughs> um, which I would have liked to have seen, but uh, I just didn't get the time, so at this point I have to wait for the uh, home uh, media release until I can see it, so yeah, in this case I'm only going to be talking about the movies that I have seen, and I had to really think hard about what films I really, really enjoyed. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these movies are going to be comic book films because that's just the kind of person I am. I'm a comic book film guy, okay? I enjoy those movies a lot more. That's not to say that if I, if I see a sort of movie, I'll be like, oh, that was actually really good. You know, I can see non-comic book films, okay? Like, uh, but it's very rare for me to watch something like that and enjoy the hell out of it. So, yeah, let's, let's go through this uh, top ten list as quickly as we can. So, starting off on number 10, Marvel's Eternals. So yeah, I thought I'd pick this as uh, the first spot. Why? Because I think it's a pretty decent movie. A lot of people gave it crap, but it's not as bad as it was made out to be. You know, I went into this with very low expectations, and I walked out being very pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Are there flaws in it? Yeah, of course there are flaws in it, but it's a very ambitious movie. It's nearly three hours bloody long, and you know what? I like my long movies. It had some very interesting characters. Yeah, uh, Icarus wasn't, you know, all that. You know, there are moments where Richard Madden definitely showed that, you know, you know, he, had, he has a very interesting arc there, but there were far more interesting characters than him in the movie. Like uh, Mercari, for example, Phantos, uh, Angela Jolie's character, Athena, or Athena as it were, was great. Gilgamesh, I wanted to see a lot more of those characters. Durage, great characters, I thought, but uh, let down by some very weak ones, like Gemma Chan's Cersei, who just was just kind of there. Like, there wasn't really a lot to her character. Um... What's his name? Uh, uh, John, uh, uh, was it John? No, Kit Harrington's character, like, was just completely wasted and just there for setup. Like, he should have been a main character in the movie. Uh, again, like, the whole love free triangle, like, was just sort of shoved in. Uh, Sprite, just, yeah, I didn't really care. But other than that, I thought the overall film was decent. It wasn't as bad as it made out to be, and it's not the worst Marvel movie I've seen. It's it's still better than, say, something like For the Dark World, I, I think, personally. A very ambitious movie, very flawed, yes, but not that overly terrible. And I am looking forward to seeing where a sequel could take it. Like, it does have the potential to be a very grand kind of uh, entry in the MCU. Number nine. Free Guy. So yeah, Free Guy. I was kind of surprised by this movie. Eh? You know, it was one of those films you didn't really expect to be anything special. And to be honest, it isn't. But uh, Ryan Reynolds, man, just sort of delivers with this movie. Like, uh, he's just always fun to watch. And the movie's concept of uh, having him be this NPC video game character who just sort of springs to life. And you get all these little wacky references to video games including references to Star Wars and the Marvel Universe because, uh, you know, this was uh, acquired by Disney, I think, right after during the Fox buy and they were making this movie. So yeah, they had time to change a few bits, add some things to it, and for the most part, it makes it for a very fun-driven movie. Like, it's a fun film, and if you're into video games, you're gonna get a lot of the references that this movie is going for. Uh, at times, it can probably be a bit dull and hard to get into. Like, you need to have that video game sort of uh, format to understand it, and that way you'll probably appreciate it a lot more. Honestly, not a terrible movie. Definitely fun. Definitely creative with some of the things it does. A lot of nice little Easter eggs thrown in, and just Ryan Reynolds is just a national treasure. He just He's just a very lovely guy to watch in a film, so yeah. At number 8, we got Raya and the Last Dragon. So yeah, this is probably going to be the only animated movie I'm going to have in here, because uh, 
trying to think that if I saw any other animated movies that last year, and I really can't think of anything that me, you know, captured captured me. So I'm yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with Ryan the Last Dragon. It was uh, it was a definitely unique movie. If I had to give a complaint to it, uh, it's it just feels very rushed at times. The movie has this very fast, fast pacing, and the whole time I was kind of watching it, I felt like this could have been better as a TV series, because the world it explores is very well developed, it's very colourful, it's very unique, there's different environments, different worlds, different towns they sort of go into, uh, Raya's character and her struggle to basically save the world and bring everyone back together is a nice little message, and of course uh, Aquafina as the voice of the last dragon, uh, I liked it. I like the news of the Chinese dragons in this movie. It's not the typical sort of British uh, Western style dragons that you get, like the Rurins or whatever, if, you, if, if that's what you call them, or the bat-like ones. Uh, these ones were pretty cool. I like the whole animation style of them running or using the rain to run and fly, basically. And all the side characters were fun side characters, as you'd imagine. Again, my biggest complaint really is, is that this movie just feels kind of short and kind of rushed. I would have liked the movie to take more of a slow approach and take our time to just sort of take in these various worlds and take in all of these various characters. And also the action scenes and sword fighting and the hand-to-hand, -hand, pretty well choreographed, definitely badass. Um, would I like to see a sequel to this? I feel like this is one of those movies that would work with a sequel or hell, maybe do a remake or a reboot of this and just make it into a show and that just follows the movie storyline but just more expanded. That would be bloody great because generally speaking I feel like this could be something similar to the next Avatar. Like, it has potential and I enjoyed the film and I'd like to see more of that world, so yeah. At number seven, Nobody. So yeah, Nobody. Uh, a movie I went in not really expecting much and play, you know, the main character being played by the guy who plays Soul Goodman in uh, Breaking Bad and his own show, Better Call Soul, which I do need to see. So yeah, the actor for this man, uh, he pulled it off. I didn't think uh, he had the potential to be like a badass action kind of hero guy, but he nailed it. He, he nailed it. Like, uh, it's very, it's very sort of uh, similar, I guess, to something like Taken, maybe, or uh, uh, the the good, the 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 good good, the good kiss goodbye, or something. Was it called or Extra of Violence? You know, it's a character who obviously there's more to him than meets the eye, and then you find out about that. You find out about his little past, and he's trying to protect himself and his family. You know, he's just a guy who's having a very hard time living life, essentially, and he just wants good time and he gets it and he gets mixed up with a bad crowd and stuff goes wrong but you know we get some very cool action sequence thanks to it so uh yeah like uh i didn't think about it i didn't think oh this guy can pull it off but no like this guy has potential this guy has potential i mean i think i've even heard they say this this could take place in the john wick universe maybe i guess if they wanted to like a little crossover they could do maybe they can have his character cameo and Maybe give some advice or help, maybe. I don't know, like, if they want to do something like that, it seems kind of kick-ass. But, uh, no, I generally enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really well done. Like, uh, some of the, uh, actor cameos that we got as well. I'm pretty sure Christopher Lloyd was in this movie, so that was him being sort of, like, a badass was unexpected as well. So that was great. Uh, yeah, definitely a fun, bloody time. Brutal, fun time, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely give it a go. It's one of the more action movies you wouldn't expect to be action-packed, but it is, so... Yeah, very weird, t very weird take on the sort of formula that we've gotten used to. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Definitely did. Definitely enjoyed it, yeah. <laughs> Number six, Last Night in Soho. So I, I just saw this movie recently, like a week, I think, ago, and, uh... I enjoyed it surprisingly. It's an Echo Wright movie. Uh, you know he's gonna bring his A game. Though to be fair, I enjoyed uh, his Cornetto trilogy movies and Scott Pilgrim a lot more than some of his recent ones, like uh, Baby Driver, for example, or, e or even this, to be honest. But it still captured me. The production designs of this movie uh, was really well done. Uh, the performances were fine for the most part. Kind of disappointed with Matt Smith in this. I feel like he could have had a different better role but no that's just uh that's just making him a typical bad guy essentially uh, a lot of weird psychological twists in this movie it's a very mix of 
everything sort of like a uh, musical slash psychological horror really uh it's a very weird weird film if you're into that sort of uh, supernatural psychological horror aspect vibes uh this movie gives it to you in shades i mean the first half is very different to what the second half is like the very first half is very sort of a mystery movie before it sort of transcends into a lot of, like a murder mystery ghost kind of movie and yeah i was pretty surprised by this uh the writing might be a bit weird at times, and the twists are, you know, sort of predictable if you really think hard about it. But, uh, uh, they're sort of set up and foreshadowed, I guess, for the most part. And, uh, yeah, I did enjoy this. Uh, could have been a lot worse, but no, I, I think this is one of Edgar Wright's better movies, I think. Like, it kind of shows that he has this, uh, talent to dive into different kinds of genres. And now it's like a case of, I really want to see what other kind of movies he can potentially do. So... Yeah, well done on Echo Right for this. Very good film. Very good film. Well done. The Suicide Squad. Not Suicide Squad, THE Suicide Squad. James Gunn's Suicide Squad, to be exact. Pretty damn bloody good. Uh, this movie felt like it was a better done version of uh, the first take that we got with David Ira's cut. Um, well, in this case, David Ira's directed movie. He's we, We've not seen his actual car of the movie. But yeah, The Suicide Squad. Colourful. Fun. Creative. Uh, Likeable characters, I'd say. Like, this movie is just very bombastic from beginning to end. Like, uh, the way it starts basically sells you on the concept and idea what this movie is. Very gory, very bloody as well. Um, Harley Quinn, again... Steals the show in this, alongside a bunch of other new characters like Ratcatcher, uh, King Shark, who's voiced by Sylvester Stallone of all people, and uh, John Senna as a peacemaker who's getting his own show, by the way, this month, so looking forward to that. Uh, Rick Flagg returns, better done here than he was in the original movie. Some other cameos like Captain Boomerang, which uh, sadly most people will feel like was wasted, but uh, honestly, the opening is great, uh, the action sequences are oh, great, uh, the hand-to-hand, -hand, the, the, the single fight scenes that we get, uh, the final battle with Starro the Conqueror, like, was unexpected, I mean, whoever went into this movie thinking that we were gonna get Starro, I mean, obviously, if you've seen the trailers, yeah, but whoever went into these movies in general thinking we're ever gonna get Starro, right, and here we are, here's Starro, and we're fighting him, and it's like, holy crap, and of course, uh, El Eldris uh, Elba as, a uh, Bloodsport, bloody brilliant, uh, Pretty much a carbon copy of uh, Will Smith's Deadshot, I guess, but I definitely enjoyed him in this movie a lot more. I seriously want to see Eldris El Elba do more comedy roles. Like, the guy just knocks it out of the park. And, yeah, a comedy... Yeah, this movie just hits it in spades. If you know James Gunn, if you're familiar with him, you know he's kind of style of comedy that he goes for. I mean, this is basically a more bloody extreme version of Guardians of the Galaxy, essentially. But it just works so bloody well. And uh, yeah, I really want to see a sequel to this. Really, really, really do. Like, uh, this movie just fixes a lot of the problems that that first one had. So yeah, definitely want to see more of these characters. Definitely a fun time. Give it a go. And number four. Spider-Man No Way Home. So yeah, I kind of went... This was the movie I was most hyped to see, I think, throughout uh, 2021. I went into this thinking it was going to be probably the best thing ever, but uh, sadly, that was not the case. Uh, this movie got leaked hardcore for the last year now, and yeah, it pretty much killed all the hype since we all knew who was going to be coming back in this movie. We all knew... We all knew they were they were they were trying to hide it, but we knew they were all in this. But yeah, uh, for the most part, is this the best Spider-Man? No, I don't think this is the best one. Spider-Man Two still holds that candle, and I do feel like Far From Home is even a better structured, better paced, and better made film than this. Uh, no Way Home definitely starts off very slow, which I actually enjoyed. I enjoyed all the school, uh, high school stuff they were going for. I was hoping to see more of the past characters, but we didn't get that. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't even that bothered with this being a multiverse kind of movie. What we were getting was pretty interesting in and of itself. But then once it does go into the multiverse, this movie just goes through this very fast-paced uh, uh, 
storytelling of bringing all these different characters in and it does a pretty good job of that doc ock was was pretty good he was pretty fun though again uh my biggest complaint with this movie really is the fact that i wish it was a bit longer a bit more tied to the previous films and i you know in terms of uh the mcu spider-man i mean i would have preferred to see some of the more supporting cast from the previous movie make a comeback and i wish the action scenes were better in this movie that's my biggest complaint really the action scenes in this movie aren't that great people are sort of overhyped and going oh yeah it's, it's awesome it's the best ever and it's like no no it's 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 really not it's really not nothing comes close as being as good as the uh, freaking bank scene from spider-man 2 or the, even the train fight nothing comes close to the uh air, you know air fight with harry osborne and Peter and spider-man 3 even the sandman fights were better were better in the original spider-man 3 even the green goblin fights were better like that's not to say that this movie doesn't do anything creative there's some creative sequences in this where we get uh, william defoe back as green goblin he's william you know he's norman osborne is a very sort of tragic character but he's goblin is as every bit as crazy and psychotic as you thought he was gonna be and they do a good job of uh, solidifying him as why he is Peter's main nemesis. So they did a really good job of that. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange gets a lot more to do in this movie than we previously thought. A very fun sequence between him and Spidey in their little fight, which I think is the most creative fight scene in this film, uh, sadly, because you know nothing really comes close to that in my opinion. But uh, the interactions is where this movie shines, and the various interactions with uh, Peter and the villains, and Peter, and Peter, and Peter. <laughs> yes, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in this movie. If you didn't know before, and yes, they do show up, and they are basically main support characters. They aren't just little cameos, and then they're done. No, they're here for a good duration of the movie. And this movie really does sort of take Peter, like, out of the MCU in terms of these, or out in terms of the elements of the MCU, like uh, a lot of people complained about him basically being Iron Man Junior. This movie sort of takes a step back and decides to basically make him or set him up to be the Spider-Man that we all know and love. This is a very dark film. This is a very, this is a movie that does start off very serious, very dark, very quickly, and it does get very dark very quickly. Characters do do tragically die in this movie, do get hurt. And uh, just the general message of Spider-Man being the one hero that doesn't kill his villains is something that's a big theme of this movie and they really dive into that and they showcase it and it's like, yes, that is who Spider-Man is, that's who he should be, they do that. And the ending, the ending that they go with with his character is very bittersweet, it's a very dark, tragic ending and it just solid it solidifies why spider-man is a very tragic character he's not a dark character but he's a very tragic character and he's always he's always a character that has a lot of pain surrounding him and they go with that and it just works the ending is great uh the interactions with the various characters are great uh some of the villains could have been better i would have you know a lizard and sandman could have been better handled the characters could have been better handled they're just sort of in there it doesn't really make sense why they do what they do uh electro makes no bloody sense because he doesn't remember <laughs> he doesn't he never found out that spider-man was peter parker so it's a bit weird that he's in this movie unless we're supposed to i don't know maybe maybe there's a deleted scene that will explain it but yeah this is one of those movies that i definitely enjoyed i had fun with it there are some decent moments that apartment fight i mean seeing william defoe just go nuts as the goblin uh, is great and some of the character designs that they switched up a bit were great but like i said my biggest complaints are that the the action could have been better in this film um and we could have had more slow down time again i know we can't get everything in this but i feel like this is one of those movies that could use uh, an extended cut like there definitely feels like there's a lot that was left on the cutting room floor and i definitely want to see more of those potential deleted scenes if any of the supposed rumors and leaks are to believed but yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home, definitely uh, a good third injury compared to most third injuries. Uh, does a really good job of tying up Peter Parker's journey as Spider-Man because essentially this is his origin story. This MCU trilogy of him that we have got in this high school trilogy is his origin story. He's gone through all the pain and loss now and now he's basically become the Spider-Man that we want him to become and it's great. And I can't wait to see where they take him with his potential new trilogy. So yeah. A lot, uh, lot of things to go. It basically can only go higher at this point. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's see where they, uh, they take him uh, with the next few movies. Uh, but, yeah. Number three. 007, No Time to Die. So, yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig's final outing as James Bond 007. 
Man, it, we waited for this movie for a bloody long time, but finally it came out, we finally got to see it, and honestly, I enjoyed it. I feel like this is Daniel Craig's um, third best performance, or at least third best entry in the movies. And one could even say this is his best performance as the character, actually. They do a really good job of uh, humanizing him, of really throwing in the emotional elements of this movie. Uh, it is a very emotional film. It's a very dark film. Uh, it's very different from most Bond movies as well. This is a film that basically serves as a conclusion to Daniel Craig's arc that started in Casino Royale. Casino Royale, Quan of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre and No Time to Die are pretty much this five act movie structure and it closes it all off in a nice little bundle. Are there some flaws here and there? Yeah, mostly to do with the main villain, aka, uh, uh, what's his name, Rami Malek uh, as Savin. Uh, he sort of is there in the beginning and then he sort of is and he, his presence is, so, is felt but he doesn't really come into the movie until towards like the last hour or so. And yeah, his scenes are pretty fun. He's got that very menacing sort of villain confrontation that he has with Bond. But I expected more. Um, but, you know, it's not that terrible. It's not that terrible. Again, could have been better, but not that terrible. Christopher Waltz, I feel, does like a better performance as Blofeld in this. Madeline Swan and her relationship with Bond is better handled. A bit more of a dark side to uh, M here. Obviously, Money, Penny and Q play their typical roles like they do. Um, new characters like Nomi as the new 007, essentially, which a lot of people were angry about. But no, she, she's fine. She's fine. I mean, technically, you could take her out of the movie and replace her with Money, Penny and it would be the same film I guess. Um, a scene stealer from uh, Polovar, uh, you know, played by the actress who was in Blade Runner and uh, what was that movie with uh, Knives Out. Great actress, uh, great time. We would have preferred to see more of her but uh, what we got was great. Uh, good, decent action sequences, uh, not bad. Uh, but is it as good as Casino Royale and Skyfall? Maybe not, but it's still a damn fine injury and it's a nice conclusion to the character. The ending is very emotional, very sad, very tragic, and it just fits Daniel Craig's version or take on Bond, which is just tragedy, basically, you know, and they, they run with that. And for the most part, I liked the ending. Um, just, just that whole last hour could have maybe been bit tighter, bit more better, maybe, maybe Blofeld could have been the main villain instead of Safin, but hell, I'm not complaining overall, I did enjoy this, and, uh, you know, a rewatch, it was a better fun time uh, than my first time viewing, but yeah, definitely a good entry, definitely enjoyed it, uh, definitely my third favourite movie of the year, or in this case, of 2021. <laughs>
Number one. So yeah, here we are, guys. Number one. If you guessed right on what the movie was going to be, well done. If you didn't, then uh, yeah, this is going to come as a big bloody surprise. Honestly, it shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, number one. What is it? Well, it's a movie that I waited years to see. It's a movie that I went in with the expectation that after all the hype was said and done, that it was going to live up to the hype, that it was going to be as great as I thought it was going to be, despite some little flaws here and there. But uh, I had hope. I held hope that this movie would be better than what we got previously. That after three years of waiting, after fan demand, that Zack Snyder's Justice League would be at least somewhat of a masterpiece. Or at least I would sit there and go, you know what, four hours? Bloody hell, I'm gonna go for it. I like my long movies and this this is gonna be worth it. And you know what? It was bloody worth it. Because Zack Snyder's Justice League is my favorite movie of 2021. It just does everything that I wanted this particular cut of the movie to do and it does it right. Is it over long? Is, it, is there a few things you could have trimmed from it? Yeah, you could have probably trimmed a few things, but a lot of the scenes that are in this, for the most part, are scenes I had heard about, scenes I wanted to see, and they worked. They worked to push the story, to push the lore, to push the development of certain characters a bit up, and it just does a bloody great job. The visuals are great. Stephen Wolf as a villain is so much better done here than he was in the uh, original 2017 cut. He's a much more threatening villain. He's a, he's a much more personal villain with a reason for why he's doing what he's doing that you kind of feel for. The visual effects of his characters he's redesigned is just bloody very well detailed, threatening, and great to see. Uh, characters like Cyborg, uh, Ray Fisher, he bring, knocks it out of the park. His sequences are some of the best and most emotional of the film. Uh, he is the heart of the film. He is the main character of this movie and he sells it. And it's a bloody tragic shame that Warner Brothers treated him so, so much like crap because he's a very well good actor in this film and his character is very well as well. Like he's just, he's bloody great. And Ezra Miller as The Flash gets more to do and has, a, has an arc as, of himself, to be honest. And uh, yeah, it's just great. There's a lot of symbolism here, a lot of the shots, a lot of the cinematography, like Zack Snyder knocks it out of the park. Wonder Woman's more fun in this. Uh, Batman is a lot more driven in this, and Superman in the dark suit, just like, yeah, he comes in, he kicks ass, and it's great. The fact that they use his theme and his soundtrack, like, that's what I wanted to see, that's what I wanted to hear, and they do it, and God damn it, everything about this movie just, it's a four hour film. I should be bored watching this and I'm not. I'm taking everything in, I'm enjoying everything and I wanna see more of this world. I wanna see more of these characters. I wanna see more of these actors interacting. Like it's just, it's just a bloody good time and it's just a bloody well made film. Like it's so much better than what we got with, with Josh Whedon's version. He's butchered, angry, kitty drivel version with this. Like there's, there's more stakes here. There's more emotion here. There's better action, there's better character driven moments, it's just everything is just so much better handled in this movie, like... Hey, God damn, like, it's just, oh, well done Zack Snyder, well done. Yeah, hands down my favourite movie of, of the year, like, it, I enjoyed this, I think, a lot more than I enjoyed Endgame, and that says a lot, and this isn't me trying to be like a Marvel hating guy, like Marvel vs DC, this is just me sort of sitting down and going, what movie had more moments and better character moments? And I feel like this movie just hit it in spades. Just the tone and the look of it, like, just the visuals. I just, this movie just, just, just does everything I wanted it to do and more. And honestly, I would love to see a part two and part three to this. Hell, I'll, I'll just take a part two to just wrap everything up. Like, just give me that and then I'll be happy with just with them sort of finishing this entire arc up, whatever. But like, in terms of just this being like the end of a trilogy that was set up in Man of Steel and uh, BVS and just, you know, tying up a lot of the loose ends while setting things up, like, it just does a good bloody job. And I want to see, like I said, I want to see more of this world, man. I want to see more of this world. Even if it's not Zack Snyder, at least bring someone in that can continue this and do something big and better with it. But, uh, yeah, what we got overall, I liked it. And that's that, guys. That's that. That's my top ten list. Hope you enjoyed that. And remember, guys, as always, to like and subscribe. Hopefully, uh, 2022 will bring uh, bring us some better movies. Uh, looking forward to that. And yeah, can't wait to see what it does. Can't wait to see what we get. Take care, guys. Uh, take care. And uh, Happy New Year.